שלום וברכה. Holy souls, how precious you are in the eyes of the Creator that He sees you desiring His truth and loving His wisdom awake at nights and early in the mornings to hear the word of Hashem. How lucky we are that the Creator of the universe allowed us in to His wisdom broken vessels like us, scarred, burnt and hurt, like no one can imagine how, how much pain every one of us is carrying into his nights, watering our pillows with tears, crying in front of our Father in Heaven. So many lonely people, so many broken people, so many people with uh, a desiring heart that doesn't know how to how to stop for asking for salvation for redemption that is so so late that is so that is a that we miss for so many years and so many people we lost along the way and so many sacrifices we sacrificed and with all that effort and with all the tears, with all the sorrow, the pain, with all the grief, with all the, the sweat, the scars, the pain that we carry, keep on pushing forward with no end, keep on marching to Zion, hoping and yearning and dreaming and praying and screaming and, and thinking, looking for advice, asking people, asking around when a person when a person's intention is to his body then he lives in a world of separation he can never see the light because he's hungry and he feels like suffocating and things are trapping him because he's physical because his mind is set to the physical aspect of, of his being, of his life. But when a person is spiritual, it means that his intention, his focus, his awareness is to his heart, to his soul, to his spirit, to his feelings, to his thoughts. So then he can see and sense and feel other people as well. He does not live in a world of separation. He lives in unity with the rest of the world. He lives in harmony with nature, with people, with, with the angels. He understands the godly supervision of the Creator in his life because he is a spirit. He nullified himself to the will of the Creator so he can sense the Creator's move in the branches of the tree, in the leaves that are falling from from, from the tiniest branches. He can sense it in the wind. He can feel it in his mind, in his heart. Now, this is a topic that I spoke about many times and I, I really, really want to, I want to pass that thing to you. I want to be able um, to give out the wisdom and that it won't be trapped in my heart. I want to talk to you again about the fact that we live in a creation. I want to explain to you something about God. I want to explain to you something about how all this creation works. Our life, we live them as individuals. We are trapped inside of our own bodies. And therefore, we cannot sense what's going on out of the box. We cannot see, we cannot feel. You have walls that are blocking your sight. You have smells that are distracting your thoughts and your senses from smelling something else. You have sights, you have colors, you have noises. You have things that are blocking your awareness to, to your chamber, to your, to your own pit, to your own cell, to your own vehicle. But really, out of your box, out of your limit, there is a whole gigantic world that is spread around you. 
and you are the central point of it, every one of us, you are the center of the universe. From your point of view, from your angle, you are the center of the world. And even if you're a loving person and a caring person, and you really couldn't care less about yourself, you dedicate your life, your body, your mind, your talents, your sources, to help others. So you're doing for him, for her, for them. You are working and everything is surrounding you. And every one of us experience that. But this is a world of illusion. And the Zohar Kadosh is calling this world Alma de Shikra, the world of lie. And what is that lie? The lie is the separation. That is the lie. The Yetzirara is the enemy of the truth. The evil inclination is a liar. And he's telling us all the time that we are individuals. Separated from the source and separated from our siblings. Separated from nature. Separated to our own selfish box to be self-centered and scared and angry and pressured and depressed and lonely and all those negative thoughts are creating that wall of separation from us to the truth that there is a world and that that world is so deep that if you look at its depths you can see the creator reflects through it you realize by the size, by the measure, by the fact that this world is so complex, so deep, so meaningful, like cells are particles and atoms and neutron, neutrons and protons are flying in, in electricity in the air and there are waves of sounds and waves of light and waves of, of colors and everything is flowing in crazy uh, sync and we are not able to sense that. But when you do, when you go out of your trap, out of your cell, you start smelling that there is more to it. And then you can see God. Then you can see the fact that there is a creator. Now who is that creator and what does it mean? And who are we? And what is our future? We as individuals were trapped in that body. But when we are connecting ourselves to the source, to the core of who we are, we are reaching the diamond of our spirit, it's our godly soul, a heavenly portion from above. And that portion is a channel, it's a link, it's an inner connection, it's an inner spring that is attaching us, our awareness, our mind, our feelings, to an endless source of wisdom that is inner, that is spiritual, that is not even here. It's elsewhere, it's above the place, it's beyond the space, it's beyond limitations. It's elsewhere, it's in heaven, it's in a place that is above time, that is above physicality. And when we attach ourselves through our mind, focusing, thinking, believing, hoping, praying, gluing ourselves to the truth with no end, in that moment we are climbing above time. And you can feel that in in in. In, in prayer, you can feel it in time of sacrificing, you can feel it in time of learning, you can feel it in many, many moments of your life when the real true nature of your soul is, 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 is showing its guts, is showing what you're made of, that you're a soul. And when you come to that place of dedication, of realization that the Creator is above the space and He is the one and only and all the world is only His coverings and outfits, then you can start seeing things or at least from far thinking about it on how He see things in, in completion, in unity, in perfection. As an individual, you're trapped in your own body. You have your obligations, you have your, your needs, you have your fears, you have your lusts and desires, you have your high and most elevated hopes and yearnings to God. You are an individual and you suffer. But the Creator, 
he looks at life from a different angle. He sees everything in the same time. You see your own plate, you see your own room, you can feel your own flesh and your own skin. He feels your skin and my skin and their skin. He feels your heart and their heart and my heart in the same time. And he's also swimming with all the fish and with the jellyfish and with the whales and also with the dolphins. And he's also flying with all kinds of birds and all kinds of flies. And he's also growing inside all the grass and all the leaves and all the trees and all the bushes and all the highest mountains, peaks. He's the wind that blows between them in the valleys. And he's also all the waves. He inside every particle of water, in every drop. He is the source of life that maintains life on earth. And not only in this global aspect of the universe, also in history. Also since the earliest beginning when this world was only a vision in the eyes, in the heart of the Creator, also back then the Creator was the beginning of all. The Creator, He was inside the creation because He is the creation. The creation is an outcome of a filter that the Creator spread on top of His own light and covered it with shape, covered it with physical texture, with colors, with shades, with smells, with patterns, with thicknesses, with weights, with, 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 with sounds. All of those are reflections of His honor reflections of his true being but really to see who he is for that you need to have eyes that are like the eyes of Hashem Hashem asher hema meshotetot bechol haaretz the eyes of Hashem that they are searching and exploring the whole world and the other verse on eyes is saying and you receive the eyes of God you can be attached to other people's feelings, to other people's needs. You can care, you can feel, you can go out of your own box. And the Creator Himself, He lives inside of us. And He wants us to achieve those levels. He wants us to rise and shine and climb to those amazing ways of, of, of unity that we and the rest of the souls will live in peace as one. And therefore He planted that seed of faith inside of our hearts for us to believe in ourselves, for us to follow our inner faith, our deep and solid understanding, our ancient wisdom of who He is and what there is, and for us to go and to execute our dreams for them to come true. For them to come true. It depends on us if we will reveal those treasures that have been treasured inside of us. Those amazing, amazing sparks. Amazing sparks that have been given to us. And they are being seen as your talents, your thoughts, your ideas, your hopes, your, your dreams, your desires. And we should allow them out to the world. We should allow those dreams to come true by making them happen, by following our own inner desire and going and spreading the world, word in the world for the sake of our siblings, for the sake of those ones who are so scared and terrified to dream, of those ones that their heart is so broken that their soul is so trapped in fear and in pressure, and they're so lonely and so broken-hearted. We need to care for them. We need to be the voice of those who does not have a voice, who are afraid to express their hearts. We need to be the power of those ones who gave up long, long time ago. We need to be those founders of the new faith, of the new of the new age, of the new 
movement of the redemption. We need to believe in it for it to take place. It won't grow out of nothing. It won't just happen in one day. We need to bring that day. We need to bring that change. By changing ourselves, by believing in our own inner power and to rise and to, and to set our self-esteem to the heights. For us to remember that we're made of godly portion. We're made of, of, of Hashem Himself. And we need to go all the way with that faith in ourselves. And to tear the sky to pieces with our prayers. And to cry and to scream and to beg and to hope and to yearn and to write books and distribute them and to share the videos with the world and to make new posts and to spread them as well and to knock on doors and to be positive and to be positive about that, that it's happening and not to be scared of people. Not to be scared of flesh and bones. Not to be scared of what people will think about us, what people will do to us. So what? So you're going to be kicked out of your synagogue? So pray at home. Maybe you need to pray at home. So you're going to be fired from your job? Okay, so you won't have that job. So go find another job. The one who supported you in Egypt will support you, will support you in Jerusalem. The one who supported you in, in Mezhibuji will support you in Kiev. The one who supported you in New York, he will support you in Orlando. The one who supported you in, in, in Tel Aviv, he will support you in, in Tzfat. The one who gives life will give you life. You need to go and conquer the world with the light of Hashem. Hashem gave you talents, Hashem gave you abilities for you to work with them, for you to believe in yourself, for you to make videos, for you to make movies, for you to make books, to write books, for you to compose songs, to, 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 to be the best rapper in the world, the best singer in the world, the most, best com, com, uh, 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 composer in the world, the best player in the world, for you to take your guitar and go to the streets and play or, or make a... a a video of, of your music for you to share the light that lives inside of you. And you think to yourself all the time those negative thoughts, who am I and what my powers? Your powers are the powers of God. Moses was arguing with Hashem for seven days and seven nights, brought claims and, and proofs for the fact that he believed that he's not worthy to redeem the nation of Israel. And then Hashem, you know what Hashem told him? Hashem told him, it's written, Shtok, kach ala b'machshava lefanai. Shut your mouth. That's what I think you should do. And that's it. It came to my thought that you're the one. That was the end of the discussion. Seven days and seven nights, Moses brought evidence and claims and proofs for the fact that he's not worthy, that he's lazy, that he's not good enough, that he's not wise enough, that he's not perfect, that he's far from being perfect, that he's horrible, that he can't do it, that he's a messed up fruitcase, that he's a lunatic, that he can't do it, that he's a mishuga, that he's worthless, that he's hopeless. Moses was humble. Moses considered himself as the worst of the worst of the worst. But the Creator saw his heart and told him, listen, shut up. Go do what I tell you to do. And he did. And the same thing with King David. And King David is saying, when I was a shepherd and I was poor, when I was going to sleep in the pan where the animals are sleeping, I was not thinking that I worth anything. And today when I'm the king, I'm holding myself as the same zero that I am, that I was. When someone cursed him, he asked him, why are you cursing a dog, a dead dog? Held himself when he was a king of Israel as a dog, as a dead dog. Why are you screaming on a dead dog? Who am I that you will scream at me? The fact that you know that you have lackings, the fact that you know that you have been scarred in life, that you've been hurt in life, traumatized in life, it doesn't mean that you don't have a soul. And when you have a soul, so that soul is shining the light of Hashem. It doesn't shine your light. Oh, me, I'm shiny. No, I'm not shiny. The light of Hashem can shine. Can a person shine? Are you a light bulb? Can you shine? You cannot shine. 
Only if Hashem will make you shine. Like we read on Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus. He opened his mouth and suddenly his face was shining. He, he, doesn't, he didn't have a button, okay, now I'm shining. No. You cannot shine. You can try. You can smile. You can be positive. You can be lovely. You can be nice. You can take a shower. You can put deodorant. You can put some perfume. Not to, not to, to stink the world around you. You can be nice. You can be lovely. You can be the best that you can. But can you shine? You don't know how to shine. You can try to shine. You can be positive. You can be positive. You can be positive. You can go with the truth and to try to do the best and to do tshuva and to take a cold bath and to go and to go and learn Torah and to do some good things with yourself and then to use your talents. If you know how to play a guitar, you need to play a guitar. If you know how to cook, you need to cook. All the world to come will be a, a, a huge f- a festival of food. That's what we read. That's what we saw. That the Creator will sit with us and going to feed us with amazing food, delicious kinds of food. You think we don't need people to cook, people who enjoy to cook? I wanted to tell you another secret about the redemption, something small that came to me, that the, when the Creator will take away the evil inclination of, of lust for money, of that crazy desire and search for money, people won't stop themselves from giving because they won't be paid for it. Just everyone will give out of his heart what his heart desiring to give. There are people who likes to give their art. They will give it for free. People likes to make um, softwares like computers, design, um, social media design, graphic design. They will do it for free. And there are other people who like to serve. You have people who likes to cook. They will cook for free. They will serve for free. People who likes to build houses. You have people who likes to build houses. You have people who likes to drive trucks. You have people who love trucks. You maybe think that it's punishment to be a truck driver because you never meant to be a truck driver. But there is someone that for him, oh man, like his truck is amazing. Like on, in Redemption Day, he will own a new truck you never saw. Like he, he, he will ride on, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Shame on you, Drom Shekasuto. Optimus Prime. He will drive on Optimus Prime. Shame on you, Dor Kasuto, you forgot the name of Optimus Prime. The one and only Optimus Prime. How can you forget Optimus Prime? Shame on you, Avdro, shame on you. He will drive on that red-blue truck to, to the heavens. He will drive to, to Jerusalem on Optimus Prime. Everyone will ride their horses, their bikes, their, their cars. Everyone will find what their heart desires. And everyone will give out from their heart what did the Creator put in their hearts. One will dance and one will sing and one will cook and one will paint and one will illustrate and one will give out and one will, 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 will everyone will do their thing. Everyone will do their things. One will make amazing atmosphere, one will make music, and one will make this kind of music. One will design the city, the new city. One will open the roads. Everyone needs to do what their heart desire. And the Creator desiring you to become the one you are. You need to become that one you are. That's your mission. Not to be scared of people. Not to be scared of your own fears, of your low self-esteem. Just to nurture that inner child of yours and to let it grow and to let it go out to the world and conquer and reveal your goodness with no end because you are good and not only good, you're so good, you're amazing. You're a creation of God. You're a creation of the Almighty you're a creation of the Divine One. You are Him. You are Him in coverings. There is no you, there is no me. There is only God's light. And it's here. It's in the books. 
It's in the computers, it's in people, it's in the voice, it's in the smell, it's in the food, it's in the tables. It's all over the place. Melo kol aretz kevodo. All the land is full of his honor. And the honor is, are his outfits, are his coverings. And those coverings are his reflections. And if you want to know him all, if you want to know him completely, you need to see it all. You need to see all the details, all the atoms, all the, all the details, all the particles of creation from every aspect, from every angle. And not only now, also during all the history of time, since the beginning. And that is the reward of those ones who believes in the Creator. That, that when the day will come, and knowledge will wash the world, and the knowledge of God will cover the universe like water covers the sea, everyone will know Him. And when they will know Him, it means that they will become one with Him. And they will be attached to all the particles of soul that ever was connected and came in touch with their soul and they will see the world from an inner aspect means that they will be able, we will be able, you will be able to see the world from multiply angles, from a huge, huge, huge amount of, of, of aspects and angles. If you care about the sea, if you love the dolphins, if you love the waves of the sea, if you care about the weather, Oh man, you're going to see the world. You're going to explore the world. You're going to have 1,000 years of, 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 of knowing, of learning, of seeing, of visualizing, of feeling, of smelling, of touching, of rising, of becoming one with the universe from your place. And your place is not your figure. Oh man, I'm going to walk for 1,000 years. No! If you have a child, you'll be attached to him from inside. If you have a friend, you and him are going to walk together. You're going to see things in the same way. And not only you, also your ancestors, also your grandfather and your great-grandfather and your great-great-grandfather and to the beginning of who you were in the soul of Adam and Eve. You're going to see through all the eyes in a knowledge of, of, of a godly soul in a bright and open, wide ability to sense millions of things in a moment, in one time, with no limitations at all. In the present time, you'll become one with God. Now God is great, God is so huge that it will take time, like a drop that falls to the ocean. It spreads, it spreads, it grows, it grows. But it takes time for it to cover the whole ocean, right? To spread so much that the particles of that drop will cover the whole sea. It will take years, right? Eternal years it will take. Because you're a portion, but you will expand like a flower that will keep on blooming and growing and expanding and rising and shining and touching and reaching and, and developing and understanding and feeling and sensing and growing and learning and spreading and more and more. And it will never end. It will never end. We're entering to a gate of eternal redemption above time, of endless goodness that will wash us forever, that will elevate us forever to our true potential, to become one with God that is above the place, that is above the space, that is above all definitions. Yes, do you want to say something? I'll tell you the truth. I'm also like you. I also never heard classes like that before. And I'm very happy that the Creator is allowing me to express this wisdom and to share it with you. And um, every one of you, for me, is a, is a brother, is a family member, is a sister, 
is uh, is part of us is part of our movement and we want you in we want you to grow we want you to succeed we want you to help us to climb and we will help you to climb and together we're going to reach out to more and more and more that will join us till there will be no one left behind no one will be left behind we're not going nowhere and we are in no rush we're not running and we're not scared and we know that the eternal redemption that is above time will take place and will cancel death and will erase all kinds of pain and sorrow and the resurrection of the dead will bring back all the people we love and loved all the people who ever lived on earth will stand up back on their feet because time will disappear and there will be no time no more and all time all moments in time will rise back to take place in a dimension that is above time and there will be no problem to see people who lived here 3000 years ago walking in the same place with people who just born today congratulations by the way and the creator he is a creator he is not part of this world he is above 1000 in Hebrew is Aleph. 1000 years of redemption is called Aleph. Aleph is when you write the word Aleph, it's like to write the word Aleph. When you write 1000, it's like to write the first letter in the alphabet, Aleph. It's coming to teach you that 1000 years are the first step. 1000 years will be the 1000 years that our bodies will be elevated from physicality to complete spirituality back to our source and there we will live forever it will take 1000 years for our bodies to be purified so well that there will be no sense of physicality in them anymore and all this physical creation will just nullify itself completely to the spirit okay Thank you. May Hashem bless you. May you rise and shine and succeed. And keep on with your great work. It's going to be Shavuot in a few hours. And then Shabbat, the holy day of Matan Torah. Hopefully we'll have the pleasure and the merit to speak before. Thank you for waiting for this great talk. And I appreciate your friendship greatly. And I know Hashem is with us within and surrounding and loving and hugging us from outside. May his blessing hover upon us all, and all our prayers will be answered in no time. Amen. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom.